you're the king and you're invited to come in. Let's bless the Lord. If you can stand on your feet for a moment of prayer. And because he is the king of glory. And we thank you for the music ministry on this morning. Because he is the king of glory. And we've invited him to come in. Just take a second or so one more time. Let's give the Lord a praise in this house. And we thank him. For he is to us what he is to us. Father, in Jesus' name, God, we thank you for another opportunity that you've allowed us to see a day that was not promised to many. But you saw fit in your sovereignty, even your decreed will, to allow us to come forward. Come to this place where we can worship you in spirit and truth. For he that worship him must first come and we must worship you in spirit and truth God we come to you asking you that you would touch us today that you would anoint us special for this assignment father I am not our leader and we thank you for him but God this task of standing in his stead is most heavy and God I ask now that you would anoint me today don't allow any flesh to glory in your sight God, use me for your will and not for vain glory. God, you have the right of way in this place. For we know that today is the day that we celebrate the birth of the church. Pentecost. And God, we ask now that you would set this place ablaze in the spirit. God, let healing and deliverances take place today. That God, that whatever we need, it's, or, it's ours for the asking. God, that whatever we need is ours for the asking. And God, we speak even now that whatever we need, it is ours for the asking. And God, you do these things and we'll be careful to give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory that is due you. In Jesus' name we pray. Once again, let's clap our hands and celebrate the God of our salvation. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hey Amen. We thank God for this honor and privilege. Certainly we do give honor to um, these esteemed men, to these um, quorum of elders and ministers and these deacons that, um, and these leading women that uphold the arms of our leader. And I believe that he may be watching. So if he is watching, and I'm sure that he is, in their absence, but never in their absence, that's just celebrate and honor the God in them. Can you just celebrate and honor God for our leaders so that they can hear, pray that they are well as they tune in. I do not take this assignment lightly. We thank God for all the precious people of the Lord as our leader would give honor to visitors, saints, and friends in your respective places. We thank God for each and every one of you. I do, I don't normally do this, but I'm learning as I um, get a little older and I thank God for seeing another birthday on yesterday. I thank God for seeing 48 years and I believe that everything that God has ever said about me, it has to happen and it is happening right now. And so allow me just to give honor. I do give honor to uh, my sister. I thank God for in my person of Rosalind Calvin, sister Rosalind Calvin. I normally don't do that but I'm learning to appreciate family even more so than I've ever done before. Um, I acknowledge my family, speak well of my family, but can you just help me honor my sister and just, um, just thank God for her as a form of encouragement to her. Amen. I call her, uh, she's not the oldest, but I do call her, she's the matriarch of the Kenner family here in Kokomo. And I thank God for Lady Marilyn Carter. Come on, let's celebrate Mother 
Mother Carter and her family, the Carters that are here. I see you, Dr. Washington, Lady Washington, I see you all as well. I'm going to get to it. I'm just trying to calm myself down. Because, um, yes, I'm just trying to calm myself down. It's, uh, it's hard to minister. It's not hard, but I don't take this. Um, it's hard to, it's hard. It's hard to minister in the stead of your leader. Um, because you all know me. I'm Darrell. So you know me. So, yeah. But I'm asking God to have his way. God bless our musicians today. We're going to the book quickly. We're going to the book of Acts, chapter number one. We're going to go to the book of Acts. We're going to two portions of scriptures this morning. The book of Acts, chapter number one. We're going to read a few verses there. And then we'll transition to the book of Acts, the second chapter. So Acts 1 and 2, we're going to go there just with a few familiar scriptures. Acts 1 and 4 says, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, Ye have heard of me, for John truly baptized with the Holy Ghost. Now... Not many days hence. Verse 6 declares and says, When they therefore were gathered or come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Verse 7 says, And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Verse 8 says, But you shall receive power. Can someone just yell out power? power? After that which the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and the, uh, unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Let's transition to verse number 12. Then return they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. Verse 13 says, And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room and were abode both Peter and James, John, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon Zeliot, and Judas, the brother of James. Verse 14 says, And these all continued in one accord. They all continued in one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and, mother, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brethren. I just want to read that again and just take note of that. Verse number 14. And these all continued in one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. Um, Acts, the second chapter, if you will. Verse number one, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. See that again? Two, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Verse 3 says, And there appeared unto them clothing tongues, like as of fire, and it set upon each of them. Verse 4, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Someone yell out, Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Two more verses, verse, verses in your hearing. Verse number five, and they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews and devout men out of every nation under heaven. Our last verse. Now when there was noise abroad, in other words, those in the community heard a noise. They heard a sound that was occurring right there where they were in that particular entity, that particular uh, sect, that particular um, setting, if you will. The multitude came together and were confounded because they thought every man they heard speak in his own language. You may close your book. We thank God for the reading of his scripture. 
on today. I want to minister to you a message entitled, Prayer and Unity Activates Pentecost. Can you say it with me? Prayer and unity activates Pentecost. One more time. Say prayer and unity activates Pentecost. Look at our world, believer. Look at our world, uh, even the unbelievers. Um, you can't hardly watch the news now because the news is somewhat depressing. The news is somewhat um, overwhelming. Um, the news, when you look at several stations, even on social media, different platforms, you really just want to turn off because you don't want those things, those issues or circumstances to get in your spirit. Amen. Um, these times of economic disasters, and we see now that there's domestic abuse everywhere. Domestic abuse within homes. And recently, there's domestic abuse in the household of faith. Uh, you see on the news, individuals fighting in the household of God, which is the pillar ground in truth. There's battles and conflicting unrest in the spirit world and in the natural world. Um, there's all type of physical and verbal and mental and emotional distresses that is happening in our homes everywhere. Yes, there's even to the point there's a rise of familiar and seducing spirits. Um, familiar and seducing spirits that are now overwhelming our young people, those in the church and those who are not in the church. The strongholds ever producing and ever erecting. And there are individuals, even now, they will tell you, don't you mess with my stronghold. I don't want to be delivered from the very thing that's trying to control me. But how many of you all know that the devil is a liar? And I refuse, and I know you refuse in this season of your life to be overwhelmed with what the it's of your life that God has come, sent his son, and died for our sins, and has released us from the chains of bondages thereof. Look at someone and say, I in this season will be set free. From every yoke of bondage that is trying to overtake my children, my husband, my grandchildren, my wife, my grandparents. We will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. If you believe it, clap your hands and tell the Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, the enemy is trying to bring about uh, um, seasons of depression. We call it seasonal depression. When the seasons of your life change for the good, the enemy assures you of past experiences to offset your deliverance. And I come to tell you today as a messenger that prayer and unity activates Pentecost. I'm going to tell you why, but you've got to understand, you've got to look at a panoramic, a peripheral viewpoint of what the world is now um, saying or producing or are giving or presenting before us. See, the world don't care anything about kingdom. And so kingdom, uh, uh, kingdom experiences come about through prayer and fasting. And that's the reason why we must have a unified front because as we're learning in our eschatology sessions, these, these times of um, empowerment, where we are headed, tell somebody where we are headed. And so you got to know how to combat spirits. You got to learn how to combat five and ten percenters and his Hebrew Israelites and, and people of other forms and fashions of doctrinal beliefs, whether they be yours or not. Don't you know that the enemy's objective is to make sure that you do not know and have in the indwelling of the Holy Ghost that lives and resides within you? Don't you know that he does not care about 
about generational lineage as it relates to you the enemy's job is to make sure that he still kills and destroy but did not John 10 and 10 of the clause now say of that scripture but I am come that you might have life and that more abundantly lay hands on yourself and say I speak life and so there is a clarion call. There's a clarion call being blown for sons and daughters of the kingdom of God. It's important that we tell this generation. Uh, I told pastor the other day, some quite some time ago, that I believe I'm of the last of my generation. I'm a little bit older of, of my cousin Erica, and I'm just a little bit older of her, but even they're all of our generation. You don't find too many people of my generation in the church now. Because mom, Lisa, they have options. They have options now. You don't tell them. And then since COVID has come, mother and darling Pulak, COVID has come, messed up our world, messed up our mindset, messed up the train of thought, messed up in how we worship and how we came and we began to labor before God, how we worship God. Now we're still in post-COVID, which is now epidemic. We're now in the endemic. And now people are saying, I don't have to come to church now. Because I'm now conditioned to stay home and I'm conditioned to now do what I want to do. Why? Because I have options. And so the church of the living God, the pillar of ground and truth now is being eaten alive. Because we've allowed choices and options to denote the very thing why God, his son, has now come bled and died and um, blood and water come out of our sins didn't say a mumbling word and we have allowed the ends of our life to now confound us and now if we're not careful even the very elect will be and so we understand that oh this through fasting and the consecration and the faith of his word the promise of his word the obedience of his word through praise and worship and truth and, and most of all through true repentance. Tell someone, I don't know about you, but I got to have a repent of heart. Oh, I, I, I got to have a repent of heart in this season. Why? Because we cannot inhabit the prayer, the promise of the Holy Ghost until we recognize the restoration power of our mouth and our heart. As a man believeth, so is he. Out of the abundance of the heart, the what? The mouth speaks. Well, Joel the prophet, he promises and he prophesies to God's people. He tells them, he tells the people, he tells Israel, he says, now repent and give your hearts to God. He says, repent and now turn your hearts to him. Joel 2 and 13 says, and rend your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God for he is gracious and merciful someone say merciful he's slow to anger and of great kindness and repent of him of all evil Joel in this passage of scripture in Joel 2 begins to tell and share with us of natural disasters it's a drought that has taken place and an attack on the crops by locusts it's so devastating since Judah, which means praises indeed, was an agricultural society. Joel used the opportunity to evangelize. Look around you. Food is scarce. Never paid almost three, three fifty for a loaf of bread in my life. You remember when milk was almost five dollars just for a half gallon. You remember just recently you can get a 18 uh, you can get uh, 18 eggs a, a dozen and a half of eggs eggs and you almost paid six dollars at Walmart things are happening don't you know that even now Africa now you uh, Africa China now has now uh, trying to do something with the embargo where um, they do not take corn from the United States as an import export anymore now the world is changing do you not know governments are coming together 
together and now forming union packs, unity packs. They're trying to come together to outsource even what we call these United States of America because now they say the dollar no longer has any power. Do you not know it's common to begin and end a church now? It's so common to start a church because you may not be in agreement of what you hear. And so what it is is that we're sharing members without one common goal. So Joel begins to tell us the signs of the Lord. That the day of the Lord which one day will occur. And the day of judgment on the wicked and reward for the time for just. It's a time of prosperity and happiness for the righteous understand that no one can never never experience the promises of god without true restoration through repentance so he brings us to the book of acts i want to go there to the book of acts the book of acts opens up with a reminder um, it opens up with the reminder that Luke, the beloved physician, physician begins to write to Theophilus. Um, he begins to talk about a per previous statement from his writing from the book of Luke. Um, Luke chapter number 1, 1 through 4, and Luke 24 through 29. It begins to say such words, and behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. It says, tarry in the city of Jerusalem, yet ye be endued with power from on high. Someone say power. <laughs> So Luke continues the narrative, so he goes back to the anticipated promise as the beginning. Luke begins to describe his gospel as the former account or the first book. Luke now chooses to record that the things that Jesus began to do and teach. Understand that all Jesus did, he was teaching and he was doing. Everything that we're doing now, I almost would say is fleshly. But all Jesus did, he was doing and teaching. Look at someone and say he was doing and teaching. His ministry considered of, let tell you two things. He was doing and he was teaching. Jesus was simply doing and teaching. Understand that it was never doctrinally related without duty. It was never doctrine without duty or creed without condemn. Jesus was the walking embodiment of what he taught. He taught what he preached. He preached what he taught. He never ever had to twist anything that he said and or that he did. He never had any gimmicks. He never had any schemes. He didn't have to tell you in 90 days I'm bringing you out, out of what you don't even know. He never promised you this that or any other but what he wanted you to do is live right so that you can be with him understand that when you seek him you seek the promises of God. Now, uh, the things that we see and the things that we hear. And if you can, if you are not careful, you will turn over to tingling. Um, you'll be able to hear uh, 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 strange noises. And you'll begin to see strange fire. Um, turn the lights on in the sanctuary. Uh, now our sanctuary looks like movie theaters. Uh, oh, we have gothic pulpit furniture. Uh, oh, yes. We look like like something out of a horror film oh the church of the living God is different now and I understand progression don't get me wrong I'm somewhat a traditionalist because of where I've come up under but don't get me wrong I understand that it's time and there are times that we progress in God don't get me wrong I believe it and I'm all for it but tell me this did not the scripture say men love darkness Turn them lights on so we can all see what's going on in the sanctuary. I got to see you. Did it not say watch and pray? I can't see you when all the lights is out. Turn the lights on and let heaven shine on me. Understand that he began to practice what he preached. As we look at the text, Theophilus remembered that Luke's previous book 
ended, ended with the account of the Savior's ascension, huh, ascension into heaven. Huh, um, described as him being taken up in the last message of his promise to the 11 apostles before one was cast lot and brought in Matthias. Huh, um, the 11 apostles before he left. Huh, Understand that we find the text as we sojourn here in Acts that 40 days between his resurrection and his ascension. The Lord had appeared to his disciples offering um, the strongest possible proofs in his bodily um, resurrection according to John 20 and 19 and verse 26, 21, the 21st chapter 1 and 14 he begins to teach them and tell them he says but love I want you to understand that during this time he discussed the gems the inner workings of the kingdom of God our Savior's primary concern was not with the kingdom of this world it was not with the kingdom of this world but with the realm and sphere where God is acknowledged as king. The king is not to be confused. Tell somebody God is not confused concerning you. He's never Brian being confused concerning us because when he ordained and created us he knew what he was doing and the last thing he said and it was good. Understand now that our savior he is now telling the disciples uh, what they must contend for and to yes it's not about the kingdom of God as never will never it will never be debated the kingdom of God will never be a topic of heretic or heresy heresy it will never ever allow itself to bow down to the workers in the inner workings of iniquity and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it I don't care what behaviors we bring in the church until we have a unified front we will never ever see prayer in unity activating Pentecost in the life of the believer now, understand everything don't belong in here am I alright <laughs> understand everything don't belong in here you belong in here but that spirit don't belong in here as a matter of fact Mason said cast the devil out of our minds I don't know about you I've been saying that lately Lord cast the devil cast every thought everything that ain't like you cast it all out because I want to be saved I want to be sanctified I want to be filled with he the Holy Ghost I want to be able to operate in miracles signs and wonders and, and when I open my mouth and when I declare and decree I expect results look at someone and say I know you got power but I need you to acknowledge it uh, anybody in here besides me you know you got power uh, just lift up your right hand and say I got power mm -hmm. I got power <laughs> I got power today. The Lord Jesus offered himself to the nations of Israel as king, but he was rejected by Matthew 23 and 37. It says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou hast killed the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered my children together, even as a hen guardeth her, uh, gareth her chickens under her wings, and he would not. In other words, Jesus is saying to his disciples uh, in these next shooting minutes, uh, he's telling them that the kingdom of earth uh, was therefore postponed. Uh, it was put on hold because Israel did not repent. Uh, and receive him as the Messiah according to Acts 3 and 19 uh, verse 21 and it says repent ye therefore uh, and be converted that your sins uh, may be blotted out and when the times of refreshing 
And that's our scripture for the church. And when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Verse 20 says, and when ye shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. Verse 21 says, and whom the heavens must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of of all of his holy prophets uh, since the world began. Uh, understand, beloved, that at this present time, I'm watching my time, uh, at this present time, the king is absent. Uh, however, he does not have an invisible kingdom, uh, a kingdom on earth, according to Galatians Col uh, 1 and 13. Uh, it's made up of who professes allegiance uh, to him, according to Matthew. Matthew 26 and 1 through 12. I just want to give you some word this morning. In one sense, it consists of everyone who claims to be a Christian. That is an outward aspect according to Matthew 13. But it is in an inward reality that it includes only those who have been born again. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor. You must be born again. The kingdom in its present condition is described in the parables of Matthew 13. The church of the living God, Maureen, I feel preachy preach. It's in now the parables of Matthew 13. Good God from Fat Zion. Yes, it was not the subject of prophecy according to Ephesians 3 and 5 which says which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of the sons of men as it now is revealed through his holy prophets and through his apostles by the spirit of God verse 6 declares and says and then the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and of the same partakers of his promise uh, in Christ Jesus by the gospel. Uh, verse 7 says, uh, Wherefore I was made a minister uh, according to the gift of Christ, uh, according to the grace of our God, uh, which was given unto me by the effectual working uh, of his power. Uh, will you look down your road? and look at somebody that doesn't look like they're on lunch break and say neighbor do you have any power this morning this is Pentecost Sunday and we are the church we're the church of the living God we are direct heirs of the church yes oh we ought to praise God like we do at the concerts we ought to praise God like we do in the football fields we Praise God like we do at family reunions when we're sitting up there dancing and having a most enjoyable time. I wish the church of the living God would get back to the point when we lift our hands. Miracles happened when we lift our hands. What was in us came out of us. When will the church? of the living God experience miracles again when 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 the church of the living God see miracles happen in your family I have the answer for you the answer is prayer in unity will activate the spirit oh Oh, yes, it will. And here we find now in the book of Acts, the first chapter, Luke relates a meeting that the Lord has, that the Lord calls with his disciples. 
as they together in the room in Jerusalem our wonderful savior look at somebody don't claim a family member but look at a visitor if there are some and just tell them say he's such a wonderful savior come on just say he's such a wonderful savior get an attitude with it y'all still sitting there looking put your hand on your hip and say he is a wonderful savior yes he is he's a wonderful a wonderful savior Jesus Jesus tells him go to Jerusalem go to Jerusalem Jerusalem now and wait on the promise why did he want them Andre I feel a little preachy why did he want them to go to Jerusalem because it was the city that where they was hated it was the city where there was violence it was the city it's getting a little bit too hot oh where persecution happened it was the city excuse me for stripping it was the city yes it was it was the city hallelujah it was the city oh help yourself kid I think I will it was the city of violence it was the city of them being misunderstood it was the city of them being talked about God says I want you to go to the very place where the, they killed the prophets I want you to go to the very place where they didn't think you was anointed that's the reason why you're going through what you're going through God doesn't have you in betwixt and between you're in and you're that but God has you where you are to prove to the ones who are the haters to prove to the ones that don't think God has an anointing on your life stay at Jerusalem stay there until you're endowed endowed with power lift your voice and say yeah and so he says that the fulfillment of the promise mom Lisa I did bounce class on Saturday sissy had me in bounce class I'm trying to lose COVID y'all talk I was in them shoes My breastplate of righteousness was just bouncing. And my belly full of joy was just bouncing, Kyle. And the Lord said, just like you got all that weight on you. He said, I want you to get some more spiritual weight off of you. Some of y'all just as big as me, I ain't going to say who. But I'm looking at you. <laughs> you just as big. But you know what? You stop moving. <laughs> Dr. Washington, I love you. That was my grandma's mother Viola's doctor. But listen, the reason why some of y'all still where you at. And A. Wendell Brown and Lady Teredi Ann Wilson Brown can't help us. Got to get back to preaching because I got five minutes. Then I'm going to bounce back to my seat. I'm tired. But she said, Sissy said, I got my cousin here. Today's his birthday and I've been asking him to come. And I was the only man there. So I was kind of feeling, you know, I had ham and greens and collard greens and all this stuff. Ham hocks and uh, all type of ham and pork chops in front of me, <laughs> which was a distraction. I said, God, keep, let me keep my eyes on you. Because as anointed as I am, I'm yet man. And I started bouncing. <laughs> because you can't allow what's before you to distract you. Here we are, 
were saved and sanctified, but yelled out, distracted. I said, yell it out. I said, yell out, distraction. One more, two, two. On, on the count of three, just yell out, distraction. One, two, three, distract. The church of the living God, I'm just, I'm off, off script like minor says. The church of the living God, the disciples, after all they went through, they learned how not to be distracted. Why? Because God gave them a promise for power. And when you, Mother Christy, you know I love you. Oh, I was just a bouncing. I looked at Rosa and I said, Rosa, keep moving. Shut up, boy. <laughs> Sound just like Stephanie Ann. She thinks she's my mama. I said, girl, we got to keep moving. And every time I told her I was prophesying to my house, hey, every time I was under your shy, every time I was moving, I began to pray for my nieces and nephews. I began to pray for my brother and sister. I said, Lord, I got to get this fat off me. I got to get back in my skinny suits. I'm just playing. And I was just bouncing. And every lady said, don't give up. She said, stay motivated. Didn't she, didn't she tell us to stay motivated? She told me, she said, you can conquer anything if you stay motivated. The church. I'm off. I'm so off. I've tried. Right? It always happens. I've been preparing since Thursday. I got about 10 pages like Elder Minor. He gonna get me after service, you know. It's the worst thing to give a preacher a microphone trying to preach 10 pages. Because the Holy Ghost is saying, didn't I tell you to move on? And you want to prove to you all that I'm 30. I've been in ministry 30 years. I don't got to preach to none of y'all that I can preach. But when the Holy Ghost say shift. Look at someone and say, we got to shift. I'm I see I look at someone down. Just looks at someone again. It looks like they need to be shifted. Say, I command you to shift. The church of the living God. The scripture said, and they were in one place and one accord. When you look in Acts, when you look in second chapter of Acts, first and second, it never said anything outside of go to Jerusalem and wait until the promise comes to you. The old saints, I didn't understand it, Aunt Jean. They would tell us, get on the altar and tarry, Maureen. Got so sick of Maureen telling us to tarry. She teared us until we had cotton mouth. Call Jesus, call Jesus, call Jesus, call Jesus, call Jesus, Brian, call Jesus, 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 come on, drummer, call Jesus, 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 don't get tired, 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 call Jesus. 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 Call Jesus, call Jesus, call Jesus, call Jesus. If you call him, he'll answer. If you call him, call Jesus, call Jesus. Trina, call, call Jesus, call Jesus. Then she started doing this. Call Jesus, call Jesus, call Jesus, call Jesus, call Jesus. Wait, so while we was bouncing, I'm getting older, so I got to shuffle sometime. Mark, while we was bouncing, cousin, I said, I feel like I'm shouting. I said, I don't know what to do. She said, just do anything. Call G, call G. And she started doing that. I said, oh, I can do this. It's like I'm shouting in church. I had them big old boots on, bounce boots, and I was doing this. 
Call Jesus. Call Jesus. Call Jesus. Call Jesus. Call Jesus. Call Jesus. We got to get back to calling Jesus. And I come to prophesy. Elder Minor and Elder Sutton are one of our senior leaders. Can I prophesy? True prophet never prophesies in the house of God without permission. I heard the Lord say, tell my people that the promise that I'm sending and have sent, keep it going, is getting ready to magnify in your life. I pray I do not get another one call or participate. Pray for sister so-and-so. She got a headache and she's sick. I said, Lord, what are we doing? We're missing the importance of the scripture. And my house shall be called a house of prayer. And it's for all people. There is no affliction that's going on in your body that God cannot heal. Feel well now. Got some things going on that's too personable. And they're unmentionables and it's not wise to make mention. You don't tell tell somebody you don't tell everything. But how many of you all know that today is the day that God brings his promise to us? Now understand, they were... When you receive Christ as your Savior, everyone is indwelt with the Spirit of God. However, you got to study your word. You got to be faithful to your word. You got to pray and consecrate yourself in order to receive the fullness of his power. Take a deep breath and everybody just yell out, power! Men, sisters, judges, men have made denominations. You will never ever in the kingdom of God and in his word find anything about denominations. We have caused doctrinal battles and we have lost families and friends and even our enemies trying to preach a point or teach a point that you write. Look at someone and say, everything that come out your mouth, you scared of them? I said, tell them. Say, everything that comes out your mouth is not always God. Call Jesus. Call Jesus. Call Jesus. Call Jesus, call Jesus, call Jesus, call Jesus, call Jesus. Jesus. And what the Lord is saying to us, if you really want to receive power, don't you become a theologian and you don't have a theologian education. Now, listen to me. I'm not all for, I'm not against education. I'm not against biblical studies. I'm not against none of that stuff. Get it. I'm going back to get mine. But don't you be so great in your own mind that you can't hear God, nor his spirit. Call Jesus, call Jesus, call Jesus, call Jesus, call Jesus, call Jesus. Jesus told them to go back to the place where they were hated. And stay there. I'm ending. 
go back to the place because I go to my father and I'm sending the paraclete I'm sending you help I know when I left here or when I died you didn't have no instruction they didn't worry about the Holy Spirit because Jesus was with them they didn't need spirit he was spirit but he knew in order for them and in order for refreshing springs to change the world we need what? God's spirit tell someone I need God's spirit there's no way I've tried three times they have three different managers now that's over 720 units over there to evangelize that place. But until we come together. As the disciples did. It was through prayer. And unity. That the spirit activated itself. Within the lives of the believers. And what did they do? They changed the world. I'm finished. I'm finished. When the Lord shifts you, just go with the shift. It was late Thursday night, early Friday morning. Every man that's here at our ministry, I saw their faces. The young men, all the men, I saw their faces. And I saw the spirit of the Lord overwhelm them. Until they fulfilled every assignment that that God had from them. I'm talking about our deacons, Uncle Kenny. I saw you, sir. I saw everybody. Musicians, I saw us all. But what happened was, because men are not birthers, I saw the women stand. And as I saw the women standing... And I had a microphone in my hand. I said, women, pray for the heads that they fail not. And when we did that, there was a sound that came in this place. That every male child will align himself. That they will fulfill their God-given instructions the God-given gifts and talents that we will not lose our sons to the inner workings of the demonic realm I want every woman to stand on your feet right now and I'm going to give it back over to Elder Gow Elder Vincent to take us further every woman stand that's you every man stand Every man stand. Mother, you, Mother Durham, you don't have to stand. Mother Jean and Jean, you don't have to stand. Our seasoned women don't have to stand. All the sons, elders, ministers, deacons, lift your hands. Women, stretch your hands this way. Stand, TJ. Thank you, baby. Wherever there is a man in your section, just point to him. See a man, stretch yourself towards them. Look, y'all, y'all turn around, turn, shift. Shift yourself, and wherever you see a man, extend your hands towards them. That man may be your husband. You may have a son standing by that husband. I declare and decree that our men, including myself, we will rise to the occasion. Come stand with me, y'all. Just stand with me. I need some strength. Come stand with me. Just come stand with me. Come on, Trina. Stretch your hands towards your he may be your hatiosa. He may be your husband, your son. 
There is an attack on men everywhere. And then, Gene, the Spirit of the Lord has empowered us to be more than a conqueror. We cannot allow our fathers, our sons, our future to die off. When I count to three, I want every woman just for 30 seconds, just make noise and just shabak, just whatever comes out of your mouth. Make noise and then we're going to pray for our fathers. One, two, three, make noise in this house. Come on, let's go. To oh, come on, see our time. Come on, open up your mouth and let it be a trumpet in Zion. Mother Pula, Tabasia. Come on, open up your mouth for your godsons. Open up your mouth for your sons. Open up your mouth for your children. Come on. Don't stop. Oh, there but there not see her. Come on. Come on. Some of you got daughters. Open up your mouth. Come on, blow the trumpet and declare that they will not be overwhelmed that they will not be defeated because of the promise of the father which is of his spirit come on one more time open up your see under the Bahoba. now clap your hands and give god praise in this house come on now stay up come on come on Now every man where you are, if you can, just move your flags. Call Jesus, call Jesus, call Jesus. Move your legs, call Jesus, call Jesus, call Jesus, call Jesus, call. The Lord wants us to be motivated. Call Jesus, call Jesus, call Jesus, call Jesus, call Jesus, call Jesus. If you just, if you just move, he says, I'll move the enemy out of the direction of your house, out of your home, man. You got a lot of investment tied to you. Just call Jesus. Move your legs. Move your legs. Bounce. Move your legs. Move your legs. Move your legs. Bounce. Move your legs. Move your legs. Move your legs. Bounce. Move your legs. Move your legs. Move your legs. Bounce. Jump. 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 Jump, 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 praise the 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 jump. If you are one, call Jesus, call Jesus, call Jesus. Lift your hands all over the sanctuary. Because they were in one accord, one place. And it's not a coincidence, our church's motto is one church, one voice. That we all have the same voice and in one accord. Lift your hands high. Perhaps there's someone here that does not know the Lord in the pardon of your sins. And you will, you desire to be saved. Just lift your hands or acknowledge will come to you if you do not know the Lord in the pardon of your sins. Hey. The scripture says, and they added to the household of faith daily. So as many, and 
Anyone desires to be saved.